Hello, everybody out there in COT. Hey, the title of today and tomorrow is called Reflection. I'm going to step out on a limb. Go deep limb. Where is uh, Angela? Have you guys seen Mark by Heaven, Angela? Surely wish she was here. There are some other folks who are here also. Now, in this downtime, well, I have to tell you this, folks. I'm going to have to share something with you. There's something I call a marker. You all remember about the vision that I did have. I don't like using that word because now it's associated with a stigma. It's almost associated with a falsehood, right? But a long time ago, the Lord showed me a few things, which I did share with COT. And um, he showed me those things, and, and I never did explain to you guys what Putin was actually planning on the map, right? I never did share that. I did share, however, about the Russian Navy, the Islamic troops, the African troops, some Asian folks there in uniform, but the majority of them were uh, Putin's troops. Ever since that time, we had ISIS came into the headlines, right? Ever since that time, the Lord showed me this because it didn't make sense at the time. Russia went to the Middle East. This was way before, you know, way before Russia went to the Middle East and all this stuff. The Lord showed me a vision. And I don't like visions. I don't. Feels like your body's being ripped apart in a thousand pieces. They're not so, they're different with me anyway. He showed me this. Within that vision, there were markers, many different markers. Since the day I had the vision to the present day, there have been certain markers that have taken place. Meaning, a marker is something that you've seen in the vision that transpires, right? In real life, things that you see in real life. It could be a um, article headline, right, that you saw in the vision, marking a general vicinity around, you know, uh, basically telling you that certain things happen at a certain time, right? Certain things happen at a certain time. Ladies and gentlemen, between last night and today, I did see a marker. It's so funny because one of the markers, this is so, this is funny because you don't know how they're going to come about. One of the markers was a purple sky. Now, some of you folks remember me saying that a long time ago. Here's what happened. I, I was telling you guys about the purple star, the uh, purple sky. And as soon, it, it was just the purple was everywhere, right? An event took place and then the purple sky. When, and this, listen, this is, you just have to observe certain things. Well, a year after that, <clears throat> Prince dies. And what do they call that whole thing? Purple skies. You guys remember that? When Prince died. And they kept uttering that phrase, purple skies, purple skies, purple skies. Purple skies, right? So this guy goes kaput. Right after the purple skies, there was almost like a, I've always described a certain season where the leaves are gone off the trees, but it's warm. As though it's warm and it looks like the sun has just scorched many different things. Right? Right now, according to the markers and even unto the people, there are certain people who did certain things. There's nothing you can do about it to alter anything that those events have taken place, ladies and gentlemen. You stand at the first steps. Of the first steps of a, a type of collection. These are the days. These days are historic right now. These are the days prior to the real darkness. That is not really darkness. Folks, hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. Bear with me. All right, that was shorter than normal. Back to what we were saying. There are markers in times with the visions that the Lord has given me. Right? Uh, 
just to give you a history of certain visions that I've had, it, it began when I was very young. And it made me spooky to a lot of people. It really did. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with those visions. And it's probably the way that the, well, it is the way that the Lord has made me. You know, and, and some of the some of the things associated with me are, are uh, I, favor would be one of them. Uncommon favor would be one of them. Which, which, by the way, is why I'm in the positions that I get in. It's not not due to some uh, qualifications that people just break their neck to achieve or major accomplishments. It is favor upon my life. Anyway, I'm speaking to you all. Now, it is my belief that the Lord would not have somebody who speaks into a lot of other people. He wouldn't have that individual who's speaking by the Holy Spirit useless words. That's one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to speak useless words ever. Right? I don't want to do that. Um, but we stand at the precipice. We, we stand at the steps of an age that's coming, that is forming. And I want to tell you what's in this age. In the next ten minutes, I'm going to try to explain this. I don't want to interrupt Dr. V's time. The change in the people was one. I want to explain this first one. <clears throat> because when the people changed, it was harder and harder for those of faith to even look at the world. But those of faith became less and less concerned about the world, period. But we didn't do that, right? Those who are with the Lord, they did not do that. The Lord did that. All right? So they were, they were just not really concerned about the world. It's almost as if their, their mindset totally went into Christ and they didn't care about the world. But you had others, others, who found it so difficult to live. Because you had the world on one side and they truly separated their faith from them. In other words, these are folks that went through the earth and they could be worldly for two hours. And as soon as they saw a religious figure or, or something of faith, they would separate themselves from the world, becoming totally uh, um, um, religious in that respect. But then when it was over, they would go back to the world. They couldn't sustain walking in the spirit. They couldn't sustain it. These folks that could not sustain it were lured away. And what happened to them, I, I, I just simply can't speak. There's no way to describe it. These were the same folks that wanted, you see, they had a true joy, which was this. They wanted the earthly things so arranged, so managed, that their true joy was tied <clears throat> to their ability to have things just like they wanted them to be. That was a bad mistake. But, but this is the characteristic of these folks. They're okay so long as things, like in their homes or situations, are in their control. They only have joy when things are in their control. When things are not in their control, they abandon all faith. They become pitiful. Faith pitiful, in a sense. Right? These folks were guided somewhere. But the ones who were the faithful, who were not very successful at managing things because they had more taken from them than given. These folks hardly had anything. Right? They had so much taken. Because they could no longer do things to obtain right? resources, they, they just wouldn't compromise. Right at the point, it's as though they just said, Lord, it's your way. Or nothing at all. And they all began to walk in one direction. They were truly led to a collection point. How they were collected was by their faith. It didn't matter where they were. It mattered how they walked. You see, those who walk in the spirit are spiritually collected. They're being gathered from the four quarters of the earth. Spiritually collected. Those who are not walking by the Spirit 
do not, they, they don't belong to anything of the spirit. Now, the kingdom that is fully going to manifest, the principles of the kingdom, right? And the, and the spiritual kingdom is right here on earth. But the fullness of that kingdom is not yet known because it can only be known to those who walk by the spirit or else you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't, you don't even know the kingdom of God unless you do things by the spirit. And, and how do you do things by the spirit? Well, that's a whole, that's a different subject because most people don't do anything by the spirit. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> when you truly realize because one day you will, if you haven't already, one day you will, you're going to realize, and it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks, who Jesus is. You're going to have your moment of true recognition of the Son of Man. The only begotten Son of the living God. And when that happens, you really don't care what happens to you. But you do care about every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You don't care how you look. You don't care what is said. You don't care where you are. All those things become nothing to you. And you're absolutely concerned about your specific relationship and you pleasing the Lord. Even Paul said, he desired to be with the Lord, nevertheless. For his sake, he would endure all things of this earth because it's worth doing. When you have your moment with Christ, to walk in the Spirit becomes worth doing. That's what it boils down to. The reason why people won't walk in the Spirit after spiritual things, doing all things of the Spirit, not the one we made up in our minds. I'm talking about the true Spirit, which can never be revealed Unless you have the Holy Spirit, which is given to all the children. It's given to all of us. In fact, the Holy Spirit was working prior to you ever accepting Christ as your personal Savior. Because it is the Holy Spirit that drew you to Christ. So it's been working. I do not subscribe of this control spirit that's in the earth where mankind controls who gets the Holy Spirit who does not. That's hubu hogwash. Our father did not design any of his things to be under command of anybody's flesh. I'm sorry, he did not. Man has no authority over the spiritual realm because Jesus does. And for those who follow Christ, what they forbid on this earth is also forbidden heaven. What is loosed on this earth is also loosed in heaven for those that obey and walk by the Spirit. And that's not everybody. Everybody who sounds like they walk by the Spirit, they're not walking by the Spirit. They're just trying to sound religious. But it goes deeper than that. When you walk by the Spirit, you understand how much you do not deserve anything the Lord is giving you. You have a deep understanding of that. You understand that if you lied one time, you're just as guilty as the person, as an ISIS member who beheaded somebody. You realize they're one and the same. That's what you realize. They're one and the same. When you have that moment, sin is something that you were covered with and are covered with. And at that point, you truly do not deserve anything. And you know you deserve death. But then Christ avails himself to you. And you know he lifted you up and he took that sin. And you know that for real. It's not just a statement, not some blank statement. You see, in a blank statement, ladies and gentlemen, there's no power, but there is power in the moment. Because as you realize these things, now you're beginning to wake up spiritually. In your heart, you will condemn your own flesh, and you will no longer respond by those things of the flesh, which only leaves the spirit. This is the transition that's happening. You will live by those people who have that moment. They cannot live without Christ. I'm not talking about having a phony presence with you either. They can't live without the instructions of Christ. They don't desire to do anything outside of Christ, though they are tempted on every corner. As 
you grow, the temptations die. Hmm. These people are being gathered spiritually. The fullness of them being gathered spiritually and the reason is because of a great change that's coming upon the whole face of the earth. You see, right now in the world, there are two kings. One king has orchestrated all temptations all at one time. He is whatever's within a person. Right? Whatever kingdom is within a person, that is the kingdom of which they will stand up to, they will begin to be called to. Many are called by the kingdoms of the world. The most painful thing I ever saw in any of my visions were the ones who truly cried tears, whose hearts were truly broken, those who truly called out on the name of the Lord, those who received the joy of the Lord in their life. They just simply walked away. They walked away because the world began to respond faster than faith. They accepted him. They prayed to him. They acted in him. They did things in him. They tithed. They did all those things. And when the pressure point came, they walked away. How did they walk away? They began to take care of their personal affairs, putting that before Christ. They would do all things of Christ only when they had control of their situation. You see, you'll always go back and take care of your first love. If the first love is the world for you, in the time of the calling, you walk back to it, but it was painful to see. Because you, even in the vision, you, you're, you cry in your vision and you say, this shouldn't be so. No, Lord, don't let this happen. You could have looked at a person of whom you hated. Yes, I said hated. And if you would have seen what I saw, you would have fell to your knees and said, no, Lord, don't let that happen. That's what you would say towards a person you hate. Your worst adversary, you wouldn't want that to happen to because you would know they would be eternally lost. After the purple skies, this took root in the whole face of the earth during the political change. You see, after they were in that hangar by the ocean with Putin, the Arabic forces, African forces, some of the Asian forces, the American, the American president and vice president walked away with arrogance. As soon as they walked away, as though nothing would happen because they were truly talking about lunch, Putin went back to the map. As he pointed at the map, I began to see people being scattered. I saw those who were walking by faith. They began to join hands in very tiny circles. Not, not the big crowds you think you would see, but I'm talking about small circles, maybe four or five at the most, in different places of the world. The church population was so huge, but in the middle of them was this small group who were truly holding hands. Putin pointed at one big red circle. And when he put the pointer on there, the whole, all those people scattered. And guess what they left? They left so few people holding hands, and these people were on their knees looking up. They never stopped looking up. They never stopped. Things were falling all around them. 
and they never stopped looking up. When he pointed at the second circle, which was in Florida, I saw that clearly in Florida. The news channels, they began to show something on the news. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. But it caused people to go inside. They went inside. I have no idea what it was, but Putin pointed at us. That circle was right there over Florida. He was pointing at these circles. All the naval forces of Putin were looking at it, but then something happened in the United States of America because the TVs were going off. And I kept seeing Fox, 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 Fox. I told a couple people about this throughout that vision that Fox was the predominant uh, vantage point of this, but it, whatever it was caused people to go inside. That's when someone was escorted down the stone steps. The same person that was escorted down the stone steps, if they didn't have protection, they would die. Protection was in the streets in Washington, D.C. People had lined the streets and they had to protect the one who was escorted down the stone steps. Many vehicles, armored vehicles were in the streets. Strange uniforms that were unknown at the time, but are known now. And this was the beginning of a change so radical that very few will survive it. I saw people who take pharmaceuticals. They switched from pharmaceuticals to any type of drug they could get. And I do believe I could see heroin all over the place. So something happened to the pharmaceuticals where they were not able to get the pain medication they wanted. And they began to use heroin. <clears throat> I saw another circle around many continents. And they were trying to fortify themselves. They were trying to fortify their countries. All of them were. And I, I kept looking. I said, well, what are they doing? These massive fortifications around every country. But they were nervous. Listen, they were trying to keep something out. And I can assure you, whatever they were trying to keep out, they were nervous about. And they began to hear something. Putin and those naval forces. There was a big pink circle around the globe. With speaker icons all over it. I didn't know what that was. Until you began to hear this metallic machine sound coming from the sky everywhere. It was heard night and day. It was bothering people. And it became clear. It got closer and closer and closer. As it as it got closer, the fear inside of people's flesh was absolutely outrageous. It was closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. By the time it was very close, a, a lot of people had just lost their minds. They couldn't eat. They couldn't sleep. Anything they had uh, that were vindicated about failed because of the noise. And not necessarily anything happened, but the noise was piercing. It was a, have you ever heard a noise that was fearful? It was so fearful that would cause your heart to stop. This is what they were hearing. And it was loud and there was no escape from it. During this time, the water levels went up without warning. There was no warning to the water levels. the water levels go up in the oceans 
in the ocean, in the North Atlantic, it began to spew up these large rocks from the ocean. And they fell as debris all over the place, and then that's when the cinders began. In fact, all the while, while he was pointing at these red dots, the Russian troops, the Islamic troops, the Asian troops, and the African troops were arranging themselves all over the place. While they arranged themselves, there's one more marker. And it's the sandstorm. The red sandstorm. And then blood began to drop from the skies. It actually looked like it was raining blood. But it was the smelliest substance you ever smelled in your life. I can only speculate as to what it really was, but I would I would just guess it was something mingled in with the clouds. It could have been fallout. It could have been some type of debris. I do know one thing. It made people sick. It began to kill sea life and animals and plants and everything else. It was very toxic. That's when I heard real screams from people. Have you guys ever heard a person scream? I mean, one of those screams that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. That's how I heard the whole world screaming just like that. The whole world. The entire world was screaming like that. I'd never heard a human humanity or nor an animal scream like that. People were, people were just screaming. Didn't matter who they were. These were horrible screams. But during that time, the population significantly declined. After it flipped, or it flipped away from there, I didn't see, nor did I hear children anywhere in the earth. No children. It was sunny outside. The grass was somewhat green, but the trees were scorched. There was green grass, but the trees. The trees looked like they had been stripped of vegetation or something. It was so strange. And the people who were still here were doing drugs and everything they could do to find relief from their own minds. But the population of the entire earth was significantly diminished. I can say with confidence, according to what the Lord showed me, that we've just taken the first step toward all of those things. first step the governmental system as we have it ladies and gentlemen people are violent but that's not what gave me the marker it was a person that gave me the marker a person who was handcuffed and taken away that I saw in the vision there is no way in the world there's no way in the world that's happenstance or anything else because that person was handcuffed today and taken away today in the exact nature of which I saw it and believe me, my heart began to pound. Because you can't deny something like that. That's what I call a marker. Because time will gap and go continue. And sometimes you forget what the Lord showed you. Or you may say, well, it's not time for it yet. And then when a marker hits, your heart pounds and beats very fast. And you say, oh, my Lord, it's closer than I thought. Then you sit up straight and you say, well, I have no time for sickness or anything else. I have to go forward. Time is surely short. It's 
today was that marker. The events that carry on after the marker is what's going to lead people away from Christ by the hundreds of thousands until there are no or very few believers left. You must prepare for that. You must prepare your heart for that. Because it will hurt you in pain in your heart to see those so many people walk away. I can only suggest to you one thing. Forget the nature of the flesh and understand that the flesh is corrupted. Never look upon anybody by reason of the flesh. Because if you do so, your eyes of judgment on their flesh will seal your doom in yours. Don't look upon them by what they have done or what they're doing. Look upon them by their truth of servitude to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If they love the Lord in truth, pray for them. Edify them. Help them. Help each other. Encourage each other. Never look at the deeds of flesh again. The deeds of this world will be many. Hearts will be broken. If we don't walk in truth now, there'll be no walk for many. We'll discuss some more of this later tomorrow. You guys stay right there. Dr. V is popping on here. I'm going to say God bless you. I wanted to share that with you, but I'm going into detail Monday. If you don't mind. God bless.